Robert, let me start with you. You actually got a text from your daughter while she was in the school, correct? I was actually less than a half mile away from the high school when uh, we received a text from my daughter saying that there's gunshots at, her, at, <clears throat> at my school. Um, at that point, I was in my car, I turned around, um, and I was at the school within probably two, three minutes of the first text. Um, I was getting there as first responders uh, were showing up and um, actually got stopped. I was running into the school and a police officer stopped me and said, don't go any further, there's a shooting, there's a shooting. Did you have any idea at that point where your daughter was and what was happening with her? Um, yeah, I had my daughter on a group text with me and my wife. I told her, Nevaeh, you just keep texting me every 30 seconds, just keep texting me. Uh, she told me she was uh, locked in a closet. There was about 60, 70 kids in that closet with her. There was a time when those texts stopped coming, correct? That is correct. And as a father, as a parent, it, it actually it was the worst nightmare ever. Um, other parents were arriving to the school. Um, it was towards the end of the day, so they were on the way to pick up their kids, and they were hearing about it. So they were doing the same thing I was doing. It was starting to jam the cell tower. So there would be times where three, four, five minutes would go by and no text. And I would just be texting, Nevaeh, you there? Baby, baby, you there? You there? You there? Nothing. And then three, four minutes later, I'm okay. I'm still in the closet. And as a parent, when you don't get those texts back, you just think the absolute worst. And at one point you weren't getting him. It's because they actually started running at one point to escape the situation, right? SWAT came into their room, uh, got him out, and my phone rang, and it was Nevaeh. And, she, and I answered it, and she says, Dad, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running across the street. I'm out of the school, I'm running. And you took off running to find her at that point, correct? My only thought was getting to Nevaeh. Um, at that point, the police had pretty much every road within about a three-mile radius blocked off. Um, I just took off running around the perimeter. Um, it was about a three-and-a-half-mile sprint, adrenaline running through me, um, to get to the other side of the school where she was at. Now, your daughter, Nevaeh, is right next to you. Nevaeh, do you think that this freshman building was uh, selected on purpose? I do believe that it makes sense where he chose, just because the rest of our campus is an open campus, and this building is the only building at our school that is more enclosed. Right, and you were in a closet with, what, 70 other people, is that right? Yes, I believe so. And how long were you in there? And tell me what it was like in that closet. I believe I was in there for around two hours, but it was, it was really crowded and jammed and hot. And Tell me, did you have friends that lost their lives in this, in this shooting? Yes, I did have um, two friends that were close to my heart that passed away. And there was another kid that was in one of my classes that also passed. There was a coach that you were close to that really helped you a lot, and that coach was taken as well. Can you tell me about the coach? Oh, he was an amazing guy. Um, I played softball for the previous two years, my freshman and sophomore year of high school. And, you know, our campus is so big that the softball fields are on the other, completely other side of where the locker rooms are. And every practice, he would wait for me and a couple other people to get on his golf cart and drive us down there. And it was just, we would have conversations about, like, everyday things, and it was, it's really heartbreaking to know that he's not going to be there anymore.